Okay, I'm going to show you how you can identify um, different parts of a sine or cosine graph given the equation. Um, so we have y equals a sine b x minus c plus d. Um, and then the same thing similarly for cosine. Okay. Um, so the a value is the amplitude on both your sine or cosine. The amplitude talks about how high up or how far down the wave is. So this particular one is a sine wave. So the amplitude is this distance right here. Okay, That's what this number describes. Your amplitude is always positive. So even if I have a negative out in front of it, the negative refers to the pattern for your sine or cosine um, rather than the amplitude. The B value goes with your period change. So the period is always 2 pi divided by B. Okay? With your B value being the number of cycles between 0 and 2 pi, if you're going to look at a graph, which we'll um, talk about later. Okay? Um, a cycle is how long it takes to do one thing before it starts to repeat itself. So for sine, this is one cycle where it goes middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. Okay? If I had negative sine, um, this would be negative sine. So I'd go middle, bottom, middle, top, middle. So that would be one cycle for negative sine. For your cosine, your cosine graphs look slightly different. Um, your cosine graphs start at the top. So your cosine graph goes like this, where I have top, middle, bottom, middle, top. And that is one cycle for cosine. If I have negative cosine, this right here is one cycle or period for cosine. Okay? So cosine goes from top to top or bottom to bottom to complete a cycle. So when you find the period, the, the part where you do 2 pi divided by b, that's your period length. So if this is 7, when I find the period, I should get 7. Okay. If I get 2 pi, when I do this equation, I should end up with 2 pi if my length that the cycle went is 2 pi. If I have this distance right here is 4 pi, or this distance is 4 pi, when I divide these two, I'll end up with 4 pi as my answer. So that's what the period or cycle is. It's talking about how long it takes to do this one pattern before it starts to repeat itself. Okay. Um, this C value is the horizontal shift and it goes the opposite direction horizontally inside the parentheses. This is your vertical shift, which is also called the midline. Okay. Your midline is halfway in between um, your graph. So if we have this picture right here, that was, oops, let's just pretend it's symmetrical top and bottom. Okay. Your midline is going to be halfway in between, right? So this part would be my midline. Okay. Um, that's what the few of them are. Now it's important to remember that the A value is always going to be multiplied in front of the sine or cosine. The B value is going to be in between sine and the x or the theta. And then the C value is going to be added or subtracted inside the parentheses and the D value is going to be added or subtracted outside the parentheses. It's important to look at it that way because we can actually put this D out in front and I can do D plus A cosine or D plus a sine. Um, so it's important to have that distinction that the A is being multiplied by the sine or the cosine, the B is in between the sine or the cosine and the x or the theta, the C is inside the parentheses being added or subtracted, and the D is outside of the parentheses being added or subtracted. So if I give you that the equation is y equals 3 sine 2x minus 4, okay, the A is the thing that's being multiplied out in front, so that's the 3. So the amplitude here is 3. The D is the thing that's being added or subtracted outside the parentheses. Technically, there's a set of parentheses here, but they're not necessary. Um, if I had adding and subtracting inside the parentheses, you have to have the parentheses. So this is my D value. So my midline 
is going to be y equals negative 4. And we always use y equals to um, describe the midline. This is the B value, and I have no C value here. So to find the period, the period would be 2 pi divided by B, but B is in between the sine and the X, so I would have 2 pi divided by 2, which simplifies to give us pi. Now we also have something called the frequency, which is the reciprocal of the period. So I'm just going to take the period and I'm going to flip it. So the frequency is going to be the unsaid 1 that's on the bottom, and then the pi that was on the top now goes to the bottom. So that's all of my information for the graph. Now if I give you something like y equals negative 4 cosine of x over 2, well that didn't look quite right, x over 2 minus 8. Okay. So here on this one, the a value is the thing that's being multiplied out in front, so this is the a value. The b value in this case is a little bit tricky. The b value is actually this one half um, that we have. This could also be written as one half x like that, and you can see it either way. Um, and then this is going to be the d value. So the amplitude is four. It's not negative four because your amplitude is always positive. So I just say the amplitude is four. The midline is the D value. It's being added or subtracted outside of the cosine. So I'm gonna have Y equals negative eight. Remember we're using Y equals to describe the midline. The period I find by doing two pi divided by B. Well, B is what's in between the cosine and the X. So in this case, it's the one half. So I'm gonna have two pi divided by one half. So here, I'm gonna flip this, so this becomes two over one, so I end up multiplying to get four pi over one, which is really just four pi. So the period is four pi, which means that the frequency is going to be the reciprocal, which is gonna be the unsaid one on the bottom over four pi. Okay. Now, if I were to give you um, y equals 3 minus 4 sine um, 3x, like that, okay. um, this is a sine wave. Now when I identify my a, b, and c, and d, remember the a is being multiplied in front of the sine or cosine. So in this case it's not our first number. The a is the one that's being multiplied by the sine. So here's the multiplying. The b is in between the sine and the x, so I have this, the b, and then the d is being added or subtracted outside of the sine or cosine. So this is really a plus 3. Okay, So this is the d value. Make sure that you don't think of this as negative 1 sine 3x, um, that you don't combine it and say that this is the same thing. Okay. This is not the same thing because we have to, with our order of operations, we have to multiply these two things first and then add or subtract. So we can't just simplify it to negative sine 3x. Okay, So the amplitude is then going to be a 4. Once again, it's going to be a positive amplitude because your amplitude is always positive. The midline is the d value, which in this case is y equals 3. Um, remember, we're always representing it with y equals. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, which in this case is going to be 2 pi divided by the 3. There's no simplification that I can do for the 2 pi thirds, so I just keep it as 2 pi thirds. The frequency is going to be the reciprocal of the period, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it. So the 3 is going to go to the top and the 2 pi is going to go to the bottom. Now, please be cautious that you don't write this as 3 halves pi like this. This is not the same thing. This is saying take one and a half and times it by pi. This is saying take three and divide it by two pi. So you'll end up with two different numbers. To illustrate, illustrate um, a little bit better, if we take in the calculator and we do three divided, oops, three divided by two pi, and notice I have my two pi in parentheses, versus if I do three halves and then um, times by pi. Notice we get 0.47 versus 
4.7, which is a significant difference. So please make sure that when you flip this, that the pi that was on top now goes to the bottom and it's not next to it. Anytime you have a pi written next to something, it could also be written in the top. Okay. So that's how you identify um, the amplitude, midline, period, and frequency from an equation for your sine and your cosine graphs equations.